All right, let's take a look at the second FRQ on the AB exam for the 2023 AP calculus exam. Now the solutions aren't out. So if I have any corrections, these are my best guesses at what the solutions look like. If I have any corrections, I will put them in the comment as a pinned comment. So Steven swims back and forth along a straight path of a 50 meter long pool for 90 seconds. Steven's velocity is modeled by this. Find all times where Steven changes direction. So changing direction is where the velocity is going to change direction and give a reason for your answer. So we have a, like, this is where the velocity changes. Velocity goes from positive to negative. So that's what you're really looking at. And now in this case, what you might just do is you might just graph this equation, to be honest. That would probably be the most straightforward thing to do. Um, let me put that in here. So we're going to type in 2.38 E. Uh, where's e? e to the negative 0.02x. Okay, oops, negative 0.02x. And I always type it in here, and you always want to double check it. I didn't do that very well on the last one, but just double check that I typed it in correctly. Divided by 50, or time divided by 56 times x. Okay, and there's the sign. And let's, I'm just going to scroll through real quick and just confirm that I typed that in correctly because we're going to use this for everything. Now, now I'm going to window it. I'm going to go from 0 to 90. All right, we'll make the scale 10 just so I don't have a bunch of lines in there. And then, I don't know, the y values. I don't know, I could go from negative 3 to th uh, negative 5 to 5. I, all I care about is when it crosses 0, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, and so I would like to know every time that the velocity goes from positive to negative or negative to positive. And it looks like there's one time right here. Okay, that's where it changes direction. So you can always window it. You can make the Y a little bit narrower if you're just concerned that it crossed there multiple times. But then I'm just gonna hit calculate. I'm gonna calculate the zero. You pick a left point, scroll, move to the arrow to the right, the right point, and then you're just gonna solve when it's zero. And that happens right at 56. So we would say T is equal to 56 because um, the velocity changes from greater than zero to less than zero at t is equal to 56, okay? And then there's there any other time that it occurs does not appear so in that interval from zero to 90. Find the acceleration at t equals 60 seconds. Show the setup for your calculations. Indicate units of measures. Sorry, I had a phone call. Um, uh, <clears throat> indicate units of measures. Is Steven speeding up or slowing down? So we would like to know what the acceleration at, um, sorry, the acceleration at 60, which is really the derivative at 60. So we just want to compute the derivative of the velocity. Um, and that's where we're going to use a calculator. And that's where we're going to continue to use the function we entered. We're going to do n derivative of x, vars, y vars, y1. That's why we double check we entered incorrectly. So we just use that so I don't have to retype it in. The velocity, the, the, that is negative 0.036. Oh, and then, oh, they want you to compute it. So we should do multiple uh, 360. Okay, so that's the acceleration. So that's your setup. You don't actually have to do the derivatives, a calculator, it's fine. And then if I wanna know if it's speeding up or slowing, oh, indicate units of measure. Oops, don't forget my units. All right, so this is measured in seconds and it's meters per second. So this is meters per second squared, okay? So we also want to compute, if I want to know if it's speeding up or slowing down, I need to know the direction of the velocity as well. So here you could do this kind of like nice trick where you just say vars, y vars function, y1, and just plug in 60. And it knows to not multiply by 60, but plug in 60. And I get negative uh, 0.1595, which is less than zero. So you should say here, because the velocity is less than zero and the acceleration is less than zero, it is speeding up. Okay, so that's how we determine if something's speeding up or slowing down. Find the distance between Steven's position at t equals 20 seconds position at time t equals 80. Show the setups for your calculation. So the distance between the positions is the, disp is the displacement, change in position. That's going to be the integral of the velocity right because that's going to be if you do from 20 to 80 that's literally going to be x of 80 minus x of 20 by you know fundamental theorem of calculus so we're just going to compute this integral 
on our calculator. So we're going to do math integrate ver, oops, we want to go from 20 to 80. So 20, then 80, then put in vers, y vers, function y1, and then we're just integrating the velocity there. So we get 23.384 meters. Okay, don't forget the units. Always got to put the units in there. Show the setup for your calculations. All right, that's our setup. Find the total distance he swims from 0 to 90. Show the setup for here. So from 20 to 80, when I want the distance traveled, it's the absolute value of the velocity. Right? So in that instance, we're going to almost do the exact same thing. Let's just, let me just show you. We're going to go function integral. We're going to go from 0 to 90. But we got to put absolute value in there now. So now we're going to say math absolute value of y1 for dx and that's going to give us it's got to think I should just speed it up absolute value always takes a little bit longer because let's do more calculations and the convergence is a little bit slower geez what is taking so long? okay 62.164 meters okay and so that will conclude that calculator portion of that so that looks right. As long as I type that into the calculator, that should be the right process.